What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to Connected Franchise Mode, episode 53 here in Madden 20. Thank you for coming back. We're beginning year two for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a doubleheader. Week one hosting the Carolina Panthers, week two going on the road to Dallas. And I hope you guys were able to tune in to the offseason episode. If not, probably go watch that to give the team you're about to see some context. As you know, we're an 81 overall, 77 offense, 85 defense. I would generally think with the moves that we made... We're, we were 7-9 last season. We won a lot of games when didn't really mean much. But I, I definitely think we're going to be a team that can challenge for the playoffs this year. As you can see, we have reunited Derek Carr and John Gruden for one last ride. And we drafted a quarterback in the first round. We had two first-round picks. One of, those quarter, one of those picks was Brennan Martino, the rookie from Boston College, who looked really, really good for us in the preseason. But we're not going to... We're not going to bite on it yet again. Last year, Hank Bachmeyer looked really, really good in the preseason. Maybe even better than Jameis Winston. But then when we gave him the start in the regular season, put him under center, it was just too big for him. And we kind of rushed him. I think we kind of killed his development, his confidence just a little bit. We cannot do the same thing with Martino. So right now, barring horrific performances, which from the preseason, Derek Carr looked very, very smooth. A smooth operator under center here for John Gruden's Bucks, I think he's going to be our starter for the season. At the running backs, we got Trey Sanders and Tony Pollard. I think that's a great one-two punch. The five-time Pro Bowler Chris Warren is our fullback. We have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. I think they were number, you know, two and, you know, either way, they're either one, two, or three. They were two of the top three wide receivers in the league last year statistically, both bringing their X factors. We have Anthony Swartz and Josh Sesson, the middle-round draft pick we got out of Stanford, 74 with a hidden dev trace. Come interested to see what he can bring. OJ Howard, the veteran star dev tight end, as well as Jake Ferguson, four years the younger, also a star dev tight end, makes a pretty healthy competition there. Offensive line does look different. Rosengarten takes over for John Christian. We got Nestor. This is a big difference, taking over for Ali Marpet. Marpet was like an 89 overall, so there's a huge drop off there. Van Pran regains his spot as our starting center. And then we change up the entire right-hand side of the offensive line. We're going with the Canadian Alaric Jackson here at right guard and at right tackle. Upgrade over Tristan Wurst. Wurst was like an 84 star dev. Gave up like 23, 24 sacks. Niang, we're bringing him in. Pretty highly touted coming out of TCU. And I'm going to set a very reasonable goal this year. I want to see between Rosengarten and Yang less than 20 sacks each. I know that is a very high bar that has been set, but I, I'm confident that they're not going to be the one and two worst tackles in the league, which we've seen time and time again, even dating back to the Raiders. Uh, we will start here looking at our linebacking core. There's a trade that I'll show you guys in just one second. We were able to bring in Shaka Tony, but Devin White and Isaiah Simmons... They were number one and number two in total tackles last year. Both made the Pro Bowl, both bringing their superstar X-Factors. We have Dax Hill, X-Factor, Lejean Cavajos, our first-round pick last season, X-Factor, even though it won't be uh, enabled or triggered uh, all the time. It will be situationally. But that, you know, hypothetically speaking, that is the position I want to see the most growth and development is our safeties. Last year, you couldn't really tell that they were really good players. They didn't make a lot of plays. I hope that changes this year. Uh, outside, Murphy Bunting returns along with Thomas Graham Jr., star dev corner from Oregon that we got in free agency. Mukwamu returns. We traded for him last season. Uh, the front four is definitely a little bit different. We get Afrini Jennings, who was a 3-4 outside linebacker. We're going to try him with his hand in the dirt, see if that helps us get more pressure on the quarterback. Jeff Simmons, really, really solid. Vita Vaya, now up to a superstar dev trade after winning Defensive Lineman of the Year and leading the league in sacks, which is like a breakout year at 29, which is ridiculous. And then we have Brian Wooden. Another Stanford rookie that gave us a hidden dev trait along with Session, the wide receiver. So we're very, very optimistic that Brian Wooden is going to have an outstanding season. Very well-rounded, very powerful defensive end. And then, of course, special teams. Townsend and Jake Elliott, two of the best in the NFL, in my opinion. The best and the best return man in Tony Pollard. So from top to bottom, a very, very good team here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A work in progress as we take on the Carolina Panthers in the opener. Just see what the Panthers are at. They got McCaffrey. They got Luke Keekley, They got Brian Burns. Familiar faces, but then out of nowhere, they somehow have acquired J.J. Watt, who I think would have left the Houston Texans free agent. He's old, but he still is J.J. Watt. And this is going to be a huge test between him and Brian Burns. And Brian Burns is a guy that has dominated me every time we've played the Carolina Panthers, be it the Bucks, be it with the Raiders. So I am, you know, it's going to be a great test for that threshold that we've set for 20 sacks max for both our left and right tackle if they can shut down J.J. Watt and Brian Burns in this season opener. Let's get into it. 
Before we actually kick off the season, we always want to try to improve our team. One of our spots is right outside linebacker, where Ulysses Gilbert and Cole Holcomb are trying to battle it out. But there was a star dev, Shaka Tony, on the trade block here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They needed an edge and a wide receiver. So we're able to send them Aaron Fuller and our last year's starting defensive end, Van Banagoo, to upgrade here big at right outside linebacker. Ooh, Jake Fromm is in at quarterback. That was the other name. If we didn't go after Derek Carr in free agency, Jake Fromm was the name that everyone else wanted me to look for. You're either part of the carpool or you're on the Fromm fringe. I don't know what you want to call it. So this is going to be an interesting one. This, knowing how close he could have been a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we definitely want to shut him down. Get something on third and inches Vita via TFL and McCaffrey. And we're putting the ball in Derek Carr's hands very early in the first quarter here. Oh, no. Tony P. Tony P. We got X-Factored. You can't. Oh, you got to. Hmm. Third and six after the Luke Keekley force fumble. Definitely want to get a stand here. As that was, I'm not going to say unfair, but annoying to say the least. But we get a nice little pass break up there. Thomas Graham looking good in his first test in coverage as they hold him to a field goal attempt. Here we go, Derek Carr scrambling. Oh, he has him wide open. OJ Howard. Come on, make someone move. Oh, it doesn't make anyone miss. Doesn't run through anyone, but that is a huge gain putting us in the red zone. Great pocket. What a great, great job, O-line. Oh, Tony P. Tony P will not be denied. He runs in. Luke Keekley, 37, trying to bring it down. It's his 20th career rushing touchdown as the Bucks respond from that opening drive. You could almost say that was fringe red zone Tony Pollard fumble with a Tony Pollard touchdown. Oh, David Reese. Bricks. Somebody, I know we're in that Miami area. We got stitches. We got that stitches bricks in your face. God, Dave Reese, make that pick. You're making me embarrassed to be a Gator fan on that one. Absolute ham. Get him to the second level. You get Trey Sanders to the second level, he becomes the hammer, and any DB linebacker is the nail. Oh, that is just garbage. In the red zone, random white dude walks in. Looks like random, generic, creative, white running back. That's wide open. Too easy. He might be running back one. We might have to move him up the depth chart. Second touchdown of the game, Tony Pollard. I mean, good play call. We, we didn't have a chance of hell of stopping that. That was a great play call. I don't think he completed the catch. Will they challenge that on the field? Mike Evans with another fumble. Can I challenge it? I don't think he had. Can I? Of course. Oh, no. Nothing to challenge. No way he had complete. Can, let's, look, let's look at this real quick. Do you think Mike Evans made a football move here? Don't think so. That should be incomplete. Can I get another look? Just, just to be sure. Just to confirm what the hell is going on here. There's Big Mike. Let's see. And he goes in. And he's trying to maintain. I don't think there's a football move in that. Oh, they're so bad. Like if any good corner is out there on the market and you want to come to Tampa, hit me up. Because these guys are trashed here. Well, there's Devin White missing a tackle. I mean, it is on McCaffrey. I'm not going to be overly critical. I just feel like, you know, it's in. It's in. The job has been done. We're going to lose this game. They're going to score a touchdown, and we're going to have no time to really make a play. Can we get a sack or something? Or they're just going to be wide open, and we, we offer zero fucking resistance. Caffrey touchdown. We're down one. Well, oh, that's a... That's a late hit out of bounds. Hey, giving us a nice little 15-yard bailout. Oh, there's field goal range. There is field goal range. We're going to get the Panthers to burn their timeouts. 
Hopefully enough that we don't have to do that weird kicking animation if we have to settle for a field goal attempt to try and win it. Oh, there you go. Let's seal it. Let's seal it. Now, I would be cocky and try to just run this in and get a touchdown, but we already had two fumble losses on the day. We do not want another. Let's just kick this field goal with your... What was he, runner-up? I don't even think he made the Pro Bowl last year, which is robbery because he was 100% on all of his kicks. But Jake Elliott was a, has yet to miss a kick in his time here in Tampa. And unless we just jinxed it or they block it, which is some cheese, we are going to start the season 1-0, 26-24. We knock off the Carolina Panthers. Brian Burns was heating up. We had to double-team him a lot in the second half. He got three sacks in like two drives, and then we kind of sorted that out. Not a great start for Niang. I think Niang gave up all three sacks, but... Impressive debut. We made Jake Fromm look a lot better than what he was. It was more so the wide receivers making plays. Well, Curtis Samuel, definitely um, the other guy that they got there. But a DJ Moore made a lot of plays. Because at face value, it looks like Jake Fromm played way better than Derek Carr. But Fromm, at least two of those touchdowns were just ridiculous plays by his wideouts. It was a good game for him. You know, for us passing on him, he did still at the end of the day play well. But so did Derek Carr. I will take that. 23 of 29. 266 yards no touchdowns but no turnovers i would i would rather have no turnovers than any touch i'm gonna be honest with you at this point with how our quarterback play was last year because look at our running attack 24 carries 149 yards for trey sanders 66 yards two touchdowns for tony pollard godwin still had a solid game seven catches 80 yards uh, outside of that we shared the love we just shared the love uh, blocking, Niang, uh, Corey, here we go. The race of who's going to give up 20 sacks first. Niang has definitely pulled ahead of our other tackle. Please, someone just tell me the comments. That's not just me. Like, everyone's in their, in their franchise mode. Everyone's tackles give up a ridiculous amount of sacks. Uh, Devin White, nine tackles, a TFL on the day. A sack for Jeffy Simmons. Three TFLs and a sack for Vita Vaya. No interceptions. Game ball for me. I mean, hmm... I'm probably going to give it to Tony Pollard, to be honest with you. I think he should get the game ball. But it, either way, a win's a win. And we take this momentum into the final game of the episode against Dallas in Dallas. Game two of the doubleheader. And we're going to be taking on the also, very early, undefeated Dallas Cowboys squad. They're a lot better team. 86 overall to our 82 overall. Looking at what they're working with here. They got Zeke Byron Jones and Tank Lawrence as their X-Factor. Uh, Zach Martin and Drew Sanders, who's like a five-star recruit right now going to Alabama. He's a young playmaker there for them on the defensive side of the ball. But a lot of familiar faces there uh, as their X-Factors. It's going to be a very, very tough game. But if we can control the clock, run the ball like we did, turn over free football, we can beat any team in the NFL. Okay. Okay. Like, I don't know why. Like, my speed thresholds are good, but, like, any time a running back gets some freedom in my second level, my 94, 95 speed, like, they never catch up. Like, that should be a tackle. Zeke Elliott's, like, 30 now. That should not be untouchable type touchdown. Or if he button, get embarrassed, but Dax Hill he has more than enough speed to track that, make a tackle, he doesn't. He never does. Hey, Tank. How's it going, man? Well, we shut down uh, Christian McCaffrey last week. Going up against Zeke, we're being pathetic right now. Not getting off any of our blocks. And then Dak Prescott scrambling. Back to back facing the line of scrimmage, just chucks a dart to Mari Cooper. That's so dumb. Uh, <laughs> See, I'm at that stage. I'm at that backstage of Madden. Like we're entering like the second part of the Madden cycle. I just don't care. I can't get angry anymore. Murdered. Murdered. Nine one one. I like to report a murder. Tank Lawrence on Lucas Nyang. Ah, and there's a pick. First one of many, I assume, in this game. Nothing's going to go our way. I'm already convinced. Absolutely, positively, nothing is going to go. We're overmatched in every category. I've yet to see Chris Godwin or Mike Evans get any separation in coverage. 
We can't stop Ezekiel Elliott to save our lives. We can't block Tank Lawrence to save our lives. So you just get put in a scenario where you have to throw 50-50 balls or you're going to have no chance. It's going to be a boring 3-0 and out after 3-0 and out after 3-0. And, out. and uh, I'm just not having that. Okay, I was going to sip it out. Murphy Button gets a pick. We're back into it, everybody. Oh, let's go, Sanders. Get in. Get in there. The user truck up to the two-yard line. Sanders is gassed. Would love to see Tony Pollard in the lineup. But he's not gassed enough to take a little spin move, break the initial contact, and find his way into the end zone. To go Big Mike. Put us in the red zone. Let's go no huddle. A little bit of slants cheese here. Every now and again, I like cheese on my bread. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to... Oh, that's not a good throw at all. O-line actually held up there, but that was that was not a great pass. But I'd rather it go and sail out of bounds than into the hands of a Dallas DB. Second and 10, 27 seconds on the clock. Someone get open. Chris Godwin, and he doesn't roll into the end zone. Shall we try a C4 special? And on the way that this is getting blocked up, it's probably not going to look good, but it does. Trey Sanders gets in. For his second rushing touchdown of the game as we tie this thing up. 17 apiece as we enter halftime. Oh, there we go, Tony P. There we go, Tony P. A little bit of spice. We're only down a field goal. He's going up against his former team. The team that said, nah, nah, we, you know, we're good with Zeke. We don't need you. I would love to see him get a touchdown here. First and 10 on the 23. No turnovers. Go to Tony P again. He's safe hands. He's powerful, man. Powerful. You would hate to see a draw like this end up with anything other than a touchdown. Maybe the first passing touchdown of the season for Derek Carr, but I'm going to try to keep it on the ground. Get a hat trick for Sanders. He's very, very close. Third and goal here on the seven. Like, literally, Mike Evans has not beat Byron Jones once all day. And the one time he did, there comes Tank Lawrence with his fifth sack of the game. <laughs> oh. All right, got to sell to stop the run. Over 200 yards on the ground for Ezekiel Elliott. Why are we in a base three? That's why. That is why. They're going to hold him to a field goal attempt, I think. Unless, I don't know if they, they still have the clapper on the sidelines, Jason Garrett. But if they do, they're definitely going for a field goal. Probably going to make it, but we're going to have a minute 55 to tie it up. I might even be in a scenario where I just want to go for it. If we get put in any scenario, I might just go for it, go for the win. But down 23-20, it's in our hands. Oh, the rookie session out of Stanford puts us into field goal range with that grab. But we're going for the dub, as I stated previously. My mission statement does not change. We're going for the win at all times. And there we go, floated into Chris Godwin, makes a secure catch, we're on the 16. Oh, we have a very legit shot, second and four on the 10. Keep an eye on Tony P out the backfield if we can. Oh, we go right to the tight end, OJ Howard drops the game winner. Third and four, looking at OJ Howard again. I'm gonna be, we're gonna show confidence in him. Godwin is on a slant. Evans has been just locked down, we're not even gonna look his way. Tony Pollard, let's see if we can have him kind of pass pro, whatever he offers from that, but Godwin, Oh my God, he was open. Oh, we're gonna talk about how is okay. Look at this. First to go for the three. How, Ferguson, get open. Oh, I'm going slants. I'm going as much slants as I want after that draw. That was some grade A bullshit. An an. What, what is going on? What a shatter this controller. All right, like, mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go back to it. Third and goal on the three. After two straight drops. What is this, the Philadelphia Eagles? Someone, make a play, Schwartz. That was a terrible pass. I, I, mm. We're go I said we're going for the win. I don't want to be whatever whatever algorithm, whatever craziness is going on under the hood. I don't want to be involved with it anymore. I would rather take the L than have them just march down the field with Ezekiel Elliott in overtime. 
So we're going to go for it here. Looks like Byron Jones is off the field. If our O-line holds up, Godwin and Evans, they're both 90 overall X-Factors. If one of them can't get open, I mean, you don't deserve to win. Big Mike. Big Mike! Suck it, Jerry Jones! And like only, like only with this weird game will we get a face mask on an on, like a squib kick. Final play of the game, we're gonna get Wooden, the rookie. Come on, he's getting the double team. That's a tough assignment right there. But oh, what Dak classic Dak Prescott? Those it short of the stats. It. I hope they paid him 60 million, whatever, 30, 40 million a year for plays like that. As the Bucks are two and zero, oh, cheese or not. We, we endured way more cheese than we dished out in this victory. 27-23 over Dallas in Dallas. This is a new look Bucks team. Derek Carr, 27-40, 255, a touchdown. Had a pick, but did very, very well. 77 yards, two touchdowns. Trey Sanders, he gets the game ball. Didn't get to run the ball as much as we did against the Panthers. You know, it, it called for, you know, maybe more of just a one-headed approach, and it worked. Receiving, we got 11 catches, 86 yards for Tony Pollard, 59 for Godwin, Evans, 4 for 44, and a tutty. You look at, oh my, I don't even want to look at this. Five sacks, give it up for yeah, It's terrible. Uh, defensively, seven tackles, one TFL there for Afrony Jennings leading the team. We had no sacks, but we had three TFLs from Jeffrey Simmons. Two picks on the day, Devin White and Sean Murphy bunting as your Tampa Bay Buccaneers get a huge dub and move to 2 and 0 to start the season. We go 2 and 0 week 1 26 24 over the Panthers week 2 27 23 over Dallas both very competitive matchups but we're injury free we're 2 and 0 and we had an epic touchdown to win that with Big Mike Mike Evans Derek Carr that combination is just heating up so if you guys did enjoy this episode as always your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button smash the like button if you enjoyed and until next time it's C4 say in peace out. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping. You talking that shit when you talking and talking. Look at my options, look at me dropping. I send the game like, who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. Not me, not me, not never. I'm way too clever. Look at the kid, Mr. Consistent.